Well, good morning and welcome to service this morning. We're getting really excited about the prospect of being able to meet just in a couple of weeks time corporately. And we're excited this morning that Zach's able to join us and to bring us the message. I was mindful that uh, with this excitement that there's things that we're starting to really enjoy. Keith and I had a lovely time yesterday at the air show and it was really lovely being there and doing something out of the ordinary. And I was talking with Marilyn this week and she was really excited about the opportunity of having afternoon tea with her grandson and just being able to just chat about the things that have been going on and it's really exciting that we can do that. Now I keep using this word exciting but you know it's it's one of those things that we love what what we can do and uh, and I, I just want to um, I want to bring that to you this morning. Let's read from uh, Psalm 144 and it says this Praise the Lord who is my rock he trains my hands for war and gi and gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He makes the nation submit to me. O oh Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them? Mere mortals that you should think about them. For they are like a breath of air. Their days are like a passing shadow. Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so they billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Reach down from heaven and rescue me. Rescue me from deep waters, from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. Sorry, full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. I will sing a new song to you, O God. I will sing your praises with a ten-stringed harp. You, for you grant victory to kings. You rescued your servant David from the fatal sword. I want to bring a couple of things to you specifically in regard to that. These, these short phrases. The Lord is my rock. He is my fortress. Tower of safety. Our rescuer. And our shield wonderful truths of who our God is. Will you join us as we sing praises to him? I will say that I've been out of the airfield as I already said, so I'm a little croaky today, but let's just enjoy um, offering praises of worship to our God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for giving us opportunities daily to offer up our praise um, in not just in music and song, but all we do in your name. Father, in our times of struggle that would continue to occur, may we be reminded um, that's when you carry us. All we have to do is to hold on to you in Jesus' name. We'll continue this this morning as we sing the power of your love. Will you join me as we welcome Zach to come and bring our message this morning? Hi everyone, it's good to be here. It's good to see the people in this room, but also uh, uh, just to reconnect on a Sunday and uh, hopefully not just with each other, but with God. And um, my sermon today, I was given uh, the series title that um, Stephen's been doing, which was, uh, uh, how does it, I think, God never said that. That's how I was like. I was like, I was like, things God never said. No, it's God never said that. It's much more catchy. Um, and I was uh, joking with him because I thought that's quite a, quite an open <laughs> topic to work from, and also quite a potentially controversial one. But um, uh, I found this problem is uh, I came with a title, but it's uh, I always am worried that I'll get a title for a sermon that says everything it needs to say and then there's no reason to waffle on for about 10, 15 minutes on it. But, and I feel like this is close to that because uh, the title is um, God Never Told Us Why He Loves Us. And um, I don't know if anyone else has thought about that, but I am thinking a lot about that. Um, and I'm, that might be enough for you for this sermon just to have that statement and you want to go away and think about it. 
Um, but I will waffle on um, <laughs> with my own reflections about that. Um, it sounds like an odd thing. I don't know if you're like me, but I rest, start instantly thinking through the Bible going, I'm sure somewhere God told us why he loves us. Um, and uh, there's a, it's an interesting concept because uh, I, it's almost assumed that we know why he loves us. And yet when I reflect on it, um, I start to wonder, well, where's the answer? And um, this came to mind, uh, I, I've been married eight years, almost nine, which isn't that long, but it's long enough to know that there's certain questions that you should never answer, um, <laughs> and especially if Melody asks them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was trying to think of some funny ones. That I, uh, they're either inappropriate or they're, uh, um, there's one that's uh, when she asks, do you know what today is? Or uh, do, if, if you could change one thing about me, what would it be? You know, There's all these questions that are minefields of there is no good answer. Um, better to be quiet. And uh, uh, this is one of them, actually. Uh, you always answer the question, do you love me? I mean, well, I always answer yes. <laughs> that one's not a hard one. But if she asks me why, um, the moment I answer is the moment I don't love her. Because have you noticed every answer you give is selfish? Like, well, you make me feel, or well, you do this, or when you, and like, all those things are self-serving things. And also, they're things that someone else could have done, that, that someone other than Melody could have done that for me or had that positive trait. But when you really love someone, it, there isn't, a rational reason for it. You become kind of unreasonable in your, the way you live and the way you relate to them. Uh, and this came to me through, a, I, I first heard this from a philosopher who said, if you have a reason to love someone, then you don't love them. And I was like, that is such a strange phrase. I, I've never, like, what is he talking about? But as he talked more, I was, uh, I've been thinking a lot about that. And I was thinking, well, yeah, I, I guess the answer is I just do. And it's not, it doesn't fit logic all the time. It's actually completely illogical at times to see why I cho choose to live the way I do and love my wife the way I do. And um, that's the power of it, the, the amazingness of it. But it's so interesting when we look at God. Um, I think he's the original master of never answering this question. And I think the reason I've never thought about it before is because I often am the answering it for God. And my journey with God is always, well, he loves me because, and I add the because, uh, because I pray a lot or because I did this or I did that. And, and if I don't do those things, I don't know. Does he love me? <laughs> and we have all these things because the, to actually receive love without reason is kind of agonizing. Like it's so shocking for someone to love without a reason that I don't, I don't know if you've experienced that, but um, uh, I've seen quite a few times where you do something for someone else first thing, especially a stranger, the first thing they want to know is, why did you do that? <laughs> it's like, it, there's got to be some motive. You've got to have a reason. Why did you do that for me? You know, it's, it's almost um, so unsettling to have someone just do something of love for you without knowing the reason. So we have to figure the reason out. Have, you guys know what I'm talking about? And like, it's almost sometimes... I've seen people go to great lengths of hurting someone to try to expose what motive they have for loving. You know, the children will just be so torturing to their, their parents to try to get them to crack. So then you go, oh, see, you only loved me because I, whatever. And because it's actually really, really unsettling to be loved without a reason. It's almost, well, I would say it's actually completely unbelievable. It's, and that crazy concept is 
the good news of Christ to the world is this unbelievable love. And, and I mean unbelievable, because we always talk about believe, and like we need to believe it. But it's actually like really, really unbelievable. Unless God shows up in your life, you really can't believe that kind of love exists. Um, and uh, so anyways, that was the premise of my, my uh, sermon was, um, it was actually kind of birthed out of, I was talking to Melody about uh, whatever, all the different other ideas I had about things God hasn't said, um, <laughs> or God didn't say that. But uh, Melody was just saying to me, I'd really love to just hear a story, or I'd love to hear a sermon that God loves me, and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that's a good sermon. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's really, it's, where this is going, I don't, I'm going to waffle still because I have more reflections on it, but um, if that's all you take from this, this is a message that God loves us as agonizing as that is without any reason. He doesn't give us a reason. He doesn't say, well, because you do this and you go there and you, do, you go to church and you read your Bible this much and you serve the poor or whatever, like none of that is included in the love that is extended to you. And I think sometimes because I've answered that question so many times already before God even has a chance to not answer, I fill the silence so that I don't have to actually be impacted so intensely by the love that's given to me. It's kind of a watering down an easing of the intensity of love that is there in Christ. And I mean, my story, I guess, reflects that because I, I grew up in the church and um, I'm not going to go fully into this critical moment of my story, but my deepest encounter with God was at my lowest, worst moment in my life. And I actually, I was not like Job, you know, in Job, uh, he doesn't curse God no matter what happens. I actually did. <laughs> like, I actually got to that point. I gave up on all of it. I was just so fed up with the things going on in my life and so mad at God, and I cursed God. And it's at that moment that God met me with love beyond what I could have described. And it was so profound because I absolutely did not deserve any of it. <laughs> like, there was no reason for me to encounter God at that moment. It, it was every reason for me to be the furthest from God I could possibly be. And yet, that was what made it so impactful for me that God really just loves me no matter what I do, no matter what I've done. And uh, so that's like a, the core thing that I can't give to anyone, but I experienced. And, and what it leads to is a, a response from people, when someone encounters that kind of radical love from God, it leads to a response, some extreme response. One is you either harden yourself like the Pharisees and they start planning to kill Jesus because they can't handle some kind of, that kind of love being expressed in the world um, with, yeah, in, in their framework. It, it had to be killed. It had to be stopped. But the response when you've received it is just as irrational as the gift itself. That you see this woman pour out a year's worth of a year's salary worth of perfume on Jesus' feet. Like, what rational <laughs> reason would you do that? Like, she didn't need to. It's not like Jesus told her to or something. It's like completely unreasonable to do that. And yet it totally makes sense when you've encountered a love like that. You, your response is just as unreasonable as the love that you received. And um, I think that was leading me to think through uh, all the different stories of people deeply transformed by Jesus in the Gospels. And um, I do have a verse that I've, I thought you can't go wrong doing a sermon on this verse. Uh, it's uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And, and it goes on, obviously. God, he didn't come to judge 
but to save. And it's this free gift. But I love the first line, for God so loved the world. We're so used to that line. But it just hit me when I was preparing this. It doesn't say why. It just says it is. It is true. God loves the world. And uh, how dangerous it is for us to answer because or add because to the gospel. We don't know. Why does God love the world? We just have to share the message that he does. Because when, because, when we add because, uh, we actually taint the whole message. And um, I, I uh, was thinking of that even in our responses to God. Um, how even when I respond, I can answer that question, why do I love God? And I might add, well because you saved me, because you did this, because all. And it's like all of that, again, shows, well, I don't actually love God. <laughs> I mean, it's true those things happen. But there's something beautiful in responding with, I just love you, God. And I can't, exp- I can't explain it, but I, I do. I'm thankful for all these things, but that's not why I love you. I just do. And just like he just loves us. Um, and... Uh, so I was thinking of uh, a few different ways of seeing this. Uh, I was thinking as well of obviously the chapter on love, um, 1 Corinthians 13. And it was, showing, it was reminding me of how irrational every one of those things is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not boast. Does not envy. Uh, it keeps no record of wrongs. That's like really irrational to do when you're getting hurt, when you're being wronged. It's kind of nice to keep a record. I mean, we keep records of like criminal records, you know. We we all kind of like recording those events, (laughs) but love breaks all of that off in radical ways. And it's almost too much to read. When I read 1 Corinthians 13, it's almost too much because some of these things, it it never gives up. It always hopes. It's like, Really? Like, when you put that into a real situation in my life, that becomes a quite irrational response to pain or to a, a bad situation. But, um, but when you love, they, those things pour out in that way. And um, so I guess uh, I'll just wrap up a bit. I was thinking of ways to challenge you know you do a sermon and you say well maybe you can go away this week and do this or do that or but then I was like that's against this whole message (laughs) because it's not because of anything you do that you'll receive God's love so I I was thinking of I just I guess my heart for all of us is that we would encounter God's love raw with silence with no because not connected to, well, I sat and spent four hours praying until I, I finally felt something. Or, you know, but just to let God's love be reaching its destination in me and allow it to be there without a reason. And maybe that would lead us to express love back to God or to others without reason as well, that the, the, our lives would express love for no gain on our part, no, no, re- no need for any uh, outcome that b- benefits me. And, but all of that, again, I can't do because it's not really something you strive to do. It, it just is. So I just thought I would end with a prayer for each of us that God would do this in us and uh, that it's his to be done. Um, it's not something you can work up or make yourself experience. So... Um, God, I pray for each one of us, wherever we are, in um, whatever situations we find ourselves. Um, I pray this week that we would radically encounter your love without a because, without reasons, without us answering and watering away the intensity of that. Um, but we, I just pray you would show up in our lives and meet us in ways that surprise us, that uh, maybe even uh, transform us or shake us around. But uh, yeah, 
Lord, um, I pray it would be done without us striving and uh, trying to earn it or uh, whatever we may do to, to limit how much we receive. Um, yeah, God, I invite you by your spirit to reach each person watching this stream and each of us in this room and uh, that that love would be good news to our whole selves and our whole world. And, be, and uh, yeah, that's it. Amen. Thanks, guys. Now, I love how our God works. Um, I knew that Zach was actually preparing for us today, and I had no idea what Zach was going to be preaching on. And I love that God just shows up, and God gives you what he wants and how wonderful that, you know, that we can come to our God. You know, as we sing that song, uh, you know, the power of your love and what it actually means for us. And then as I was thinking, you know, I read Psalm 44, 144, and you may have thought, well, why am I reading that? But when I actually looked at these words and our last song that we're going to do today, we're actually going to sing about un unshakable. So I'm going to bring you back to those words in Psalm 144 that... Um, the Lord is my rock, the fortress, tower of safety, rescuer, shield, wonderful truths of who our God is. And in this last song, he is unshakable. He is our strong deliverer. And, um, and he, will just, he will just come to us and help us in whatever we need for him to do. So you join me as we sing this morning, as we sing Unshakable. Can I finish this morning by saying these words? May the peace of God reign in this place, in your place. And the love of God forever hold you tight. May the spirit of God throw, flow through your life and the joy of God uphold you day and night. Bless you and we look forward to seeing you not only on the 12th but next week. Bye for now.